Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Eye on Hako. My name is Kenta. And my name is Nicole. Today, we will be talking to you about UHD stations. Yep. Uh, Kenta, can you give our viewers an insight as to what UHD stands for? Sure. So UHD stands for Ultra Heavy Duty. Um, to give you guys a little bit more of an explanation, um, standard soldering and desoldering stations that we have, they're about 70 to 80 watts of power. And then we have um, Heavy Duty. Heavy Duty puts out about 140, 150 watts of power. And then we have the Ultra Heavy Duty, which we're going to be talking about today, and they put out 300 watts of power. Nice. So we're going to start with mm -hmm. the FR400. Yes, the FR400. It's our Ultra Heavy Duty desoldering station. Um, and to give you guys a little bit of a background story about the FR400, um, back when uh, American Hako first came to the United States, that's about 35 years ago, uh, we first made our name um, through our desoldering tools. We made really good desoldering tools, and that's how we first made our name, our reputation. And ever since that time, we've really uh, built upon that reputation, and the FR400 is no different. Um, we, for the FR400, we actually worked closely with a company um, back in Japan by the name of uh, P-Sonic. <laughs> um, Ooh, I can't figure out what company <laughs> that is. Right. So uh, they had issues... Uh, with their heavy boards, they had really large, um, what do you call it, components, large inductors that they needed to desolder or rework. And they really didn't have a way of uh, a tool that could desolder those large inductors. So they came to Hako um, looking for help, and we worked closely with them. And we, we didn't have anything that could desolder um, that type of large components at that time. But then we developed something that can uh, desolder large inductors. And that's where the 300 watt FR400 um, was born. Nice. That's, that's a lot of fascinating information. Um, I want to get into the features sure. of the FR400. Let's, let's get into the it. features. I'll turn it on, let it warm up. Um, basic standard features for the FR400. Uh, like I said, it's 300 watts of power. Um, the temperature range goes from 350C to 500C. And the actual vacuum pump is already built into the station, so there's no need to connect an external air source. Um, the, the vacuum pump is built in, and the actual vacuum, what do you call it, the suction, okay. is rated at 80 kilopascals, or about 600 millimeters of mercury. The FR400 also has three presets? Yes, you could program up to three pre presets into the FR400. Um, what else is there? There's also um, useful features like uh, standard features like the auto sleep. Okay. There's the auto shut off feature, um, password lockouts, password and like lockout. you said, presets. And uh, the nozzles. Yes, nozzles. So it has a larger nozzle. Yep. The N60. N60 series nozzles. What's the smallest and what's the largest? Uh, the smallest actual ID of the N60 nozzles is uh, 0 0.8 millimeters, and the largest is a 3 millimeter nozzle. Okay. And the N60 nozzles are a little bit larger in size compared to our standard nozzles used on like the FR410, for example. And I could show Let's you. Let's show the viewers yep. the comparison Let's so they that. can get a visual. Right here is the size of a standard nozzle. It's an N61 used on the FR410s. And this one over here is the N60 nozzle that is used on the 300 watt um, FR400 desoldering station. And when would we use the FR400? Uh, people use this in like the automotive industry, uh, solar panel, solar power industries. And I've, I've seen people also use it on like heavy uh, gauge uh, cable assembly applications. Uh, just anything where your standard um, soldering or desoldering uh, tools don't put up enough power. Uh, then the FR400 puts out 300 watts of power. So um, it's, a, it's a niche product. Not everyone okay. will be able to uh, use it every day, but um, just know that Hako has something that powerful, 300 watt station available for those customers who really need it in okay. certain situations. Nice. Um, I noticed here, Kenta, can you yep. just explain the clear case? Oh, the case? The, the clear clear case. case. Why is it clear? So this is a filter cover. Um, and there's also a clear solder collection cartridge on the handpiece. These are indicators. Those are indicators that show the, uh, the operator or the user 
it shows them how much solder or uh, flux is being collected into the system. So for example, once there's a lot of solder collected into the chamber, it's time to empty out the chamber, replace it. And once this clear um, case starts to turn yellow from all the flux being collected into the system, you just pop this off and replace the filter, put it back on. And there's also another uh, indicator. So there's three indicators. Three indicators. This. And there's one that shoots across the screen right here. Okay, so I see it right along the bottom yep. of the LED. Every time it shoots across the screen, usually if it's not clogged, it'll shoot all the way to the middle. But once the system starts to get clogged, the clogging indicator will shoot all the way across the uh, display. Okay. And that tells the, the user that, hey, it's time to uh, maintain or uh, maintain your desoldering unit. Okay. And the FR400 also comes with a kit? Yeah. So those indicators that we just talked about, it'll allow the operator to know when to perform the maintenance on the unit. And like you said, the FR400 comes with, its, uh, with that nice little toolkit. It comes with uh, cleaning pins, a cleaning drill, a couple of replacement filters for the, uh, for the gun and for the clear filter on the station that we just talked about. Mm -hmm. It also has that nozzle wrench up on the top. Is there any feature mm -hmm. for the FR400 that we should look out for? Uh, features, you know, like we talked about, standard features like the, uh, the auto, auto sleep, auto shut off, those are all uh, standard with okay. all our stations. But as far as desoldering tools goes, um, there's other desoldering um, stations out there on the market, obviously. We also have different desoldering tools as a lineup. But as far as the amount of power um, this station puts out at 300 watts of power, it is the uh, uh, most powerful desoldering station um, available on the market. How about I show them demonstrate um, how the desoldering tool works. Let's do it. So right now I have the station set to 750 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. And what I will be desoldering, yeah, what I have here on the side here is these large coils, wound coils, to kind of simulate those large heavy components, those large inductors. And as I put this back in place, your standard desoldering tools won't be able to melt this type of uh, component because it sucks a lot of heat. But as you can see, by using the FR400, it melts it pretty easily. You guys get an idea? There you go. Fast. Fast, powerful, and the larger size nozzles do, does help in uh, reworking those uh, big, large components, like okay. I said. Thank you, Kenta. Yep. So before we move on to our heavy-duty soldering station, let's, let's recap the let's recap. FR400 for our viewers. So FR400, ultra-heavy-duty desoldering station, uh, puts out 300 watts of power. Um, temperature range is 350C to 500C. It comes with our standard uh, features, safety features like the auto sleep and auto shut off. And there's also password lockout for people that want to use it for um, process control, for example. Okay. And it has three presets that you yes. could program into the station. Uh, Built-in vacuum pump, so okay. there's no need to um, connect an outside air source. Um, the N16 yeah. nozzles. Oh, N16 nozzles, larger sized N60 nozzles. Once people were able to um, desolder those large components, uh, next step is they needed a way to solder those components back onto the board. Um, so they needed a ultra heavy duty soldering station and that's where we developed the uh, FX801. It's a ultra heavy duty soldering station. It puts out the same amount of power, 300 same watts power. of power on the station. The temperature range is a little bit different. On a little this. bit different, yep. So it's 50C to 500C. 50 to 500C. 50 to 500. And the presets, there's six presets. Yes, instead of three, the there's, you could have uh, six presets on the 801. And the other um, features, standard features, are all in the FX801 as this, well. Okay. And regarding um, soldering stations, there's other... Uh, what do you call it, heavy-duty soldering stations available from our competitors as well, like uh, Metcal has a dual heater type heavy-duty iron, uh, Weller has like a 200-watt iron, JBC has like a 250-watt uh, radius station, um, but as far as the amount of wattage and the power it puts out at 300 watts, the FX801 is the, again, the most powerful uh, soldering station um, out there. Awesome.
I noticed the handles on the side of the station as well, so it makes it easy to pick up and move once you're done with your work. Yes, it does. That's it awesome. Does. Um, the tip selection. The tip selection for the Ultra Heavy Duty FX 801. The standard tips are called T33 series tips. And for the T33 series, there's uh, 11 different tip shapes available. Okay. And, and you want to show them what they I, look like? I do. I want them to get an idea of what this, this tip looks like. So that's what the standard T33 series tips look like. So I noticed, Kenta, that the tip is fairly large. It's a little um, bit larger. The tip mass is large. If a customer wanted to, um, if a customer wanted to get into maybe a tight area or a smaller space, is there another option in tips? That's a very good point you pointed out. Um, so you see the large uh, head size of those tips. It's fairly large, like you mentioned, yes. and people liked like the uh, the actual power that the station puts out at 300 watts it has a great power yep. but um sometimes you can't fit the large head into tight spaces this is true. so just recently we came out with a new series of tips okay they're slimmer that's the one you have in your hand and they're okay. called the t33-ss tips and, and how many options are there for the slim tips for the slim tips the dash ss tips there are 10 different tip shapes available okay and i want to just put them up side by side so you can get a comparison so you can see the standard versus the slim slimmer and deliver the same amount of power awesome so i turn the station on so that we can give viewers a little yeah, bit yeah. of a demonstration on yep. how much power the FX801 can deliver. Yep. So again, the station, same with the design tool, it's uh, set to 750 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'll try to melt this bar of solder. Oh, here we can get that camera angle. There we go. And you see how it's melting very fast right there. Um, usually this type of uh, this cannot be done so easily using your standard soldering irons. The solder bar will just take away, suck away all the heat from the soldering iron tip. But because the FX801 puts out 300 watts of power, it's able to just melt away at this bar solder. You see wow. that? Wow, yeah, that's a lot of power. There you go. Nice. So if you could put that away. And by the way, how's the handpiece feel? The handpiece is very lightweight. I just imagine that it would be a little bit heavier, right. but it's not. It's easy to use, easy to lightweight. Use, very right? lightweight. So um, let's, I let's think recap. we should recap yep. both of the stations. Let's recap the stations. Okay. Um, so both stations, they put up, again, 300 watts of power. Yes. Um, for the FR400, the set temperature is from 350C to 500C. It has a built-in vacuum pump, uh, 80 kilopascals for the vacuum level, um, pre three presets available, and standard features like auto sleep, auto shut off. Those are all standard. And there are six presets for the FX801. Six presets for the FX801. The temperature range is 50 to 500C. That's right. And you have the different tip selections. You have your standard T33. T33. As well as your slim key. type. Yep, your slim type. The dash SS uh, yeah. slim type uh, tips for the FX801. Yep. Yeah. And ultra heavy duty, like I said, they, these are uh, niche products, um, not for your, you know, your everyday use. Um, they are used in like the automotive industry again. Also, uh, people work in the uh, solar, solar panel, panels. solar power industries. And uh, like I said, I've also seen people use it for like heavy gauge uh, cable um, assemblies as well. Thank you all for tuning in today. Yeah. So if there's anything else, then um, I guess we'll see you guys next time. See you next time. And remember, remember keep, keep your, your eye on Hako. Thank you. Bye.